Praise the Lord, everybody, <clears throat> for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Listen, if the Lord if the Lord never did another thing for me, I would still have to praise it because he's already done enough. Now, is that the truth? If so, you, <laughs> if so, you can put it in the comments, already done. Put it in the comments, already done. Already done. Put it in the comments if you agree with that. Come on. I see you, Brother Blanding. I see you, Sister Kimberly Williams, Sister Tanya Brown, Sister Lisa McDonald, Elder Long. I see you. I see you. It's already done. He's already done enough. Now, listen to the theology behind the song. Um, there's emotion and sentiment in the song. In other words, you know, oh, thank you, Lord. You're so good. I feel good. 
but but it's not just sentimental, it's theological. The Bible says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us, who hath blessed us. Half blessed would be what's referred to as present perfect. It's already done. He's, everything that he ever would need to do for us is already done in the realm of spirit. So when we say he's already done enough, what we're actually saying is he's done it all. And so you might as well go ahead and praise him because everything about your life from the beginning to the end of the earthly life and then the, the never ending aspect of the everlasting dimension of life and the world to come, it's already done. So I see you, Pendergrass, Elder Brown, uh, already done, Mother Williams, Pastor Melinda Blue, Sister Theodosia McDonald, already done. Now I'm telling you, <laughs> Um, I love it. I absolutely now, you know, um, when we get down to the already done, da da, already done. I love it. I absolutely love it because that's the truth. And and not only that, but but I lo I love it when we praise him with audacity. That is praise him like you got the nerve to look in the face of whatever adversity or whatever distress or difficulty that might exist. Look it in the eye and say, it's already done. <laughs> He's already done enough. Yes, sir. And then of course, and I won't dwell on this, but this is Kingdom of the Arts weekend, but it definitely reminds me of um, uh, the saints uh, of old when they when they would praise the Lord at that particular cadence and that particular rhythm. All right, done. Da, da, oh. You know, when I got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Ghost and, and when the Lord uh uh enabled me to dance before him, uh it was at a rapid pace and I make no apology for that. That's the way he gave it to me. But I but I love it all and and, and I can engage in it all. I really can. I really can. But I'm thinking about um, one of the mothers, some may have known her, some may have not. She she didn't have, she was not famous. She, she didn't have a big name, but her name was Miss Mary Alice Reeves. And Miss Mary Alice Reeves, you can count on Miss Mary Alice Reeves. This kind of song right here, this would have been her kind of song to shout or to dance. She'd have been right with it. Uh, I think about Dick McClellan's grandmother, Mother Maybell Campbell. That, that was her pace. <laughs> By God, the saints of old. Lord, I think about uh, uh, Mother Moultrie from uh, New Hope, then in in a uh, in a uh, in Latter, and, and Sister Mother Curry. So many of the saints of old. That's the kind of that's 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 where the dip came from. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, uh, Sister Simon, that's exactly that. I thought about that for those who can't get with that. Go, go on YouTube and pull up the Pace Sisters singing Already Done. You, you'll enjoy them. God knows those, those girls are indeed anointed and talented. That's it, Brother Blanding. Uh, uh, so uh, thank the Lord. Um, uh, it ought to do something to you, though. It, it Almost every time I, I, I really uh, get still and, and listen to that, it blesses me all over again. Um, just, just the fact that, really, he's already done enough. Yeah. And I think about um, Mother Graham, uh, Mother Bernice Graham. That that was one of her paces as well. That's uh, those of you from uh, those of you who are acquainted with uh, Pentecost, um, you know that was that was Mother Graham and the saints of her generation, of course. But uh, that's the way they carried on. My God. All right. Listen, we appreciate all of you. And you there you are, Sister Elaine. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You won the Pentecost children. <laughs> My God. All right. And Sister Elizabeth with you. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You all know that. You know that quite well. All right. Listen. We have been, we have been in uh Kingdom of the Arts and Media uh festival weekend. And um I 
<laughs> Bro, Quentin now nah, Robin got it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Apostle Coleman, God bless you, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Apostle Coleman, listen. Apostle, and, and everything going to be 2024 20, music. Apostle Coleman going to take you back. But when you get back there and come back from being back there, you're coming back with a miracle. That's Apostle Coleman. He'll take you back there and you're going to come back with a move of God. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I'm so blessed. Uh, we've been blessed this week. I hope you have. I really hope you have from Thursday's session uh, in which we attempted to share some things about the kingdom of God alongside uh, our uh, partner in kingdom, <laughs> uh, Bishop Marcus Benjamin. And then uh, on, uh, uh, come on, Dr. McGorder. Come on, Dr. That's right. That's right. Well, see, Mother Tart, she was almost all about intergenerational, the old and the young. She was a praise mentor for us all. Uh, and then on Friday, on last evening, with the breakouts, the breakouts were strong. Uh, I think we could appreciate them more, but the breakouts are very strong. And then, uh, uh, by the way, I, I, I've posted onto the uh, the Michael Blue public figure page. I've, I've listed one more time, or uh, or in that forum the first time, those sessions that are being offered. And I genuinely, I genuinely encourage you, uh, those of you that are in the region. Don't lay back. Don't just don't just hold back. I, I don't want to dwell on it because I don't want to I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to make anybody feel bad, you know, because at some point you do what you want to do. But you have access and, and, and we didn't announce this this week or even this month. You have access to grow in your gifting, to grow in the hand of God upon your life. Why would you neglect that when you have the opportunity? You're going to stand before God and give account for every gift. I just know that. And when you stand there, you won't be able to say, well, Brother Blue didn't give us an opportunity. The Lord is just going to pull back the curtain and say, what about Kingdom of the Arts 2024? Okay. So uh, get here if you're able. Today, uh, let's see. Today, as, as it was yesterday, lead guitar, bass guitar, dance for adults and children, Choir and praise and worship combined. Graphic design did not take place yesterday, but it will take place today. Uh, Minister Derek Brown, keyboards, that is musical keyboards, uh, media with Elder Sumo, Elder Elisha Sumo. These brothers um, and, uh, uh, well, in this case, his brother, Elder Sumo is a, 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 videography expert. He really is. He's in demand around the country. And we have the opportunity to just sit and receive. Those of you that, that do music ministry, uh, well, yes, but do uh, video ministry for your, you know, the streaming, the social media for your church, and you want to upgrade it. Those of us as individual ministers who want to upgrade our presentation, you know, my presentation here, I don't want to bring you just anything. It might not look like, it might not look like I work at it, but I really do work at presenting to you in this context and, uh, and improving and upgrading. Um, we've invested resources. We've invested ministry resources. I've invested personal resources, trying to be able to present uh, a worthy offering of presentation, of, of, of a production uh, when I represent God. And so this young man is here, and it won't cost you anything directly. We ask you to give an offering, but, you know, if you choose not to do that, that's on you. But uh, be in place. Will you have access to multiple sessions? Well, you have access anyway, Sister Knighton. Just show up and, and, and see. Here's what can happen. If you come, like I'm coming from um, First Church of Whoville, and it's three of us. Well, let one go to one session, one go to the other and to the other, and then we exchange notes when we get together. You understand? We exchange notes when we get together. The breakouts are not streamed. Now, the 
the plenary sessions are streamed, and so they're on there just as much. Uh, Bishop Larimore, <laughs> uh, that I'm just telling you, that's what I told him. That's what I told him. Uh, when I didn't know what to say, and I didn't know what to do, somehow, some way you came through. Sir, hallelujah. That's what I told him. That's what I told him. Mm, 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 mm. Moving on with this list, uh, Brother Kevin McKeithen and Brother David Knight are willing to help in showing ways to improve how we do sound and that kind of thing. Uh, we are, we're all trying to get better. I know we are in this house, but, but we're trying to get better. Um, percussion, well, I'm sorry, uh, organ, Brother Michael Blanding, uh, Percussion, that's drums, Brother Tyler Potts. And then praise and worship and choir. Pastor Wendy Wyatt. Come on now, nobody has to sell you on Pastor Wendy Henderson Wyatt. You know that God has made her a, a, a virtuoso as it relates to the music ministry. And then visual arts, those of you who draw, paint, all of that kind of thing. Brother Steve Wilson, he was right there and is there. Um, to today, it was there la last evening, and then the general children's session. Sister Obana here, all the children that are elementary, primary, and intermediate, they're here on, on site in, in modular one, and they seem to be having uh such a good time last evening that uh they asked for more time, so we gave it to them, and um, we appreciate the team, Sister Obana and the team that's working with her. Um, there are, I'm glad to hear that, Sister Knight. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, so this morning, 1030 at Marion High School, you can carry your phone, you know, with prayers going on, you can carry your phone, you go ahead and get dressed, carry your phone, keep on praying. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Get in the car, praise God, hallelujah. Put it down, keep on driving. Come on over to high school, 10.30 um, to 11 is a, a fellowship time. Get juice, get muffins, and please get them because they're setting them out. They don't They don't need to take them back. We don't need to bring it back over here. So please, you know, eat it in Jesus' name. If you don't see anybody offer the blessing, offer your own blessing and eat it in Jesus' name and, uh, and drink it. And, uh, and at 11, the breakouts are going to start. And they'll go from 11 to 12.30. At 12.30, lunch will be served. Uh, lunch will be hot. You know, it, it won't be just muffins and, 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 and juice and so forth. It'll be hot. And then following lunch, we'll come back over here for the final session. Um, uh, Elder, Ju uh, Lord, Elder Juanita, I'm looking at the J-U, J-U in both names. But uh, Elder Juanita Francis will be here. She's already landed. She's already landed in Myrtle Beach. She's on, on her way here uh, at the appointed time. She will be sharing. Uh, Pastor Wendy Wyatt is going to help host her. And um, she also has, uh, 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 Elder Francis has uh, 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 two individuals accompanying her, one of whom will assist her in her praise and worship presentation and the other uh, a musician who will be supporting her. Say it all the way from London, and you won't come from across the street. Come on now, you won't come from across the river, across the county line, state line. Come on, say. All right, so so today is the culminating day. Now, Elder Francis will be with us tomorrow, but tomorrow she will not be teaching praise and worship and all that. She'll be preaching whatever God has laid on her heart. And uh, bring your young men, your young women, bring the old, bring everybody. And let's be a part of what God is doing. Amen. All right. Let us uh, acknowledge the spirit of God at this time. Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. You're great and you're great to be praised. We know that without you, we are nothing. We know that without you, we can do nothing. But with you, with you, all things are possible to him that believeth. And so, Father, we strive to make sure that we're living a life that is a with you life. You said you were with God, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. I give you praise now. I ask you in Jesus' name that you receive our worship, 
receive our praise. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for continuing to draw us. Thank you for continuing to attract us. Thank you for uh, continuing to keep the eyes of our understanding open that we might see the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah. And therefore inquire in this temple. I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins, Lord. Thank you that my loins are girt about with truth and that I have on the breastplate of righteousness and that my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Thank you for the shield of faith wherewith I shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Thank you for the helmet of salvation. Thank you for the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And thank you for the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Father, I would not be without the Holy Ghost. I would not be without the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you that early in life, somebody told me that there was a God and that that God could come and live in me personally by his spirit. Thank you that somebody taught me how to receive. Thank you that one day I understood well enough to receive. And thank you that from that day to this day, hallelujah, you abide within me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, my God, we honor you. We honor you. We honor you. I would not be without your spirit. You are my validation. You are my joy. You are my peace. You are my righteousness. Oh, Father, you are my hope. You are my inspiration. I thank you, Lord. I welcome your spirit. I welcome your spirit in this session, Lord. Move on your people. Move in your people. Lord, let somebody right now be able to sense the presence of the Lord. Let somebody be able to sense that the power of God is in the midst. Hallelujah. Let someone uh, ex experience awareness of the love of the Father, that the love of the Father, that the love of the Father is upon them even now. And we give you praise for the abundance of all things in Christ Jesus. Oh God, thank you that you forgive me of my sins and then you cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for judicial, hallelujah, forgiveness. And then thank you for experiential cleansing as I confess my sin before you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you've done it all. You've already done enough. Let your spirit guide now all of these proceedings. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I failed to mention that um, senior pastors that are present and your spouses, um, I will be sharing with you in a session at 11 as well, again, over at the high school. Now, Pastor Wyatt and the uh, praise and worship, the choir, they will all be here at the sanctuary. All right? Pastor Wyatt, praise and worship, choir, they'll all be here at the sanctuary. Children's session will be on campus in the modular classroom here on campus. Everyone else will be at the Marion High School for your session, okay? Lunch for everybody will be at the high school. May I say that again? If you're in choir, if you're in praise and worship, if you have children, small children, who are not in the adult breakouts, and they're welcome, their breakouts are for whoever, but if they are not in one of them, if they don't play bass, drums, lead guitar, and all that, their, their, their session is here at the church and the vocals, praise and worship choir, are here at the church at the worship center, sanctuary. And then all of the other breakouts that we listed, they're all at Marion High School in the various classrooms. Lunch for everyone at 1230 is in the commons area, cafeteria, front entrance, Marion High School. And uh, as I stated, I failed to mention that I will be sharing with pastors at 11 uh, in the media center, also known as the library. Um, as soon as you come into the 
main entrance of Marin High School. You just look to the left, the glass windows and all. That's that's where we'll be. All right. Well, the Lord certainly has been good. Uh, praise reports. Let, let's get a few. Let's get a few praise reports. We're going to wrap this session. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I sensed the presence of the living God. I'm so grateful for Jesus. I'm so grateful for Jesus. Lord, my God, I praise you. Lord, my God, I glorify you. Someone who has a praise report, you're welcome to share. I'm not going to beg for them because I already know that God has done great things for his people. Uh, but I'm giving time for them. We're giving time for them. All right. Dr. Johnson is excited to report that the Lord has blessed her to be credentialed as a licensed professional counselor and counselor supervisor in the state of South Carolina, in addition to her licensure in Pennsylvania. Ah, you know, that's amazing, isn't it? Thanks be to God. Welcome, doctor. Um, there's a copy and paste it there, Sister Caesar. Copy and paste it, put it further down. Um, that is a part of unfolding vision. That's a part of unfolding vision. And we thank God. That's marvelous. That's marvelous. Sister Caesar, copy it and paste it uh, where I can see it here in the immediacy of this commentary flow. Brother McCoy is thanking God for his protection from tornadoes that have touched down in West Virginia. Elder McCoy, it's good to see you, sir. Bless you in the last couple of weeks. Bless you. Uh, Brother Frank White placed second in the South Carolina welding competition. That's significant, sir. That is significant. Congratulations. Placed second. Wow. In a state competition. That's, that's major. And welding is a high demand career track for anyone who might not be clear about it. Welding is in high demand. All right. Uh, Sister Martin had a rotator cuff. Uh, had surgery on her rotator cuff. She's moving slowly, but moving. And her mother is falling and helping her to recover well. She doesn't think she wants her to go home. Probably not. Not mama. She's not going to want you to go home. <laughs> We're glad to know the Lord is keeping you. Wonderful. That's good. Yes, ma'am. Last Thursday. I understand. Sister Cherie Jackson states, she's grateful for all God has done and will continue to do in her life. Just finishing up her bachelor, uh, her BS in nursing, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. What a journey for her, but she'll finish in July. Congratulations, Sister Jackson. That's king to professionalism all day long. That's beautiful. I'm telling you, that's awesome. Since Valerie Daniel states her niece had a kidney transplant last week and she is doing fine. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Pastor Huffman Wilson, who is now the loving and beloved wife of Brother Kent Wilson, states that Brother Kent Wilson had surgery. He is healing. He is recovering well. And the Lord willing, he'll be home tomorrow. Thank God for prayers for him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good news. That is great news. All right. Well, we've read some good things, haven't we? We've read some good things. Uh, I want us to uh, take just a moment. All right, Elder Watts, I'll get this one in. She and her husband went to see Mila Grace yesterday. She's waving, holding things in her hands saying words and holding herself up. Not walking yet, but this is great progress and to God be all the glory. That is so good. That is so absolutely good. That is so absolutely good. Cherise Hudson, praising God for his healing power. On April 10th, her daughter had three mini strokes but she's doing well and will have inpatient rehab for two weeks. Blessed be the Lord's name. Blessed be the Lord's name. 
Bishop Larry Moore will graduate May 1st with a human services degree, summa cum laude, and not laude, have mercy. Isn't that good? Bishop Larry Moore, we congratulate you, sir. Uh, Sister Caesar states she's blessed both nights. She received a breakthrough in spite of the chronic pain. She pushed herself because God is good to her. Sister Caesar, we commend you for pushing through the pain. God bless you. Apostle Williams, it's good to see you, sir. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. There are two ways that I could go um, as we prepare to pray. And uh, I'm going to simply uh, state this, brothers and sisters. In, in our congregation, I've been naming some people who are going to be ordained uh, to various offices. Some will be ordained in this year's conference. Some will be ordained, should the Lord tarry, next year. So we think of offices in the church. Deacon, minister, elder, Overseer, bishop, pastor, the other five fold ministry gifts apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher. But you know, one of the things that I, I want the people that I'm responsible for, I really want everybody, but I definitely feel I'm obligated to the people for whom I'm responsible to help them understand this. We are not in a hierarchy. We're not in a king of the hill. I don't know if you ever played that when you were a child, king of the mountain or king of the hill where you pile on and somebody's trying to get on top of everybody else or you get on top of this mound and you try to push other people down who are trying to come up. Pyramid scheme, Ponzi scheme. That's not what this is and that's not what this is about. Jesus said, he that would be great among you, he that would be influential among you, he that would have a record of effectiveness, he that would have impact, let him be servant. We are called, we are anointed, we are gifted, we are graced to serve. And anytime these terms are applied to us, what they're supposed to mean is that we are becoming better and better at serving. That's what it's supposed to mean. It's supposed to mean that we're becoming better and better and more and more committed in serving. Serving God and serving his people. That's what this is supposed to mean. And it is what it means, but it's not necessarily what it means to every individual. And so holding a microphone or standing up on a platform or wearing a certain vestment or any of those kinds of things, as, as, as wonderful as they are in themselves, they mean very little in themselves. If they are not contextualized between, uh, within rather, a, a mental construct, an attitude of servanthood. Service to God and service to people. Now, let me begin to close this remark by saying that if you are saved, you didn't get saved to be a pastor or to be a preacher of any kind. You didn't get saved to be the lead usher. You didn't get saved to be the chairman of the board or the chair lady of the board. You did not get saved to be the bishop or the national mother or the general supervisor. You did not get saved to be an apostle. You got saved for one reason. If you got saved, now, I don't know if you saved. I'm not judging you. I'm not coming against you. But you got saved for one reason, Jesus. That's it. If you got saved. You got saved for one reason, Jesus. 
So that, that ain't what I got. So you might not be. You better check. But if you did, you got saved for one reason. Jesus. Somehow you became convinced that Jesus was the way. My God, hallelujah, that Jesus was essential, that you wanted and that you needed a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's why you got saved. And that's how you got saved. There's no other way. You got saved for Jesus. Now, thank God. Thank God. Here's the thing. Do you know that it's possible to be to, to get saved for the right reason? But to, once you get saved, start operating for the wrong reasons? Come into the body of Christ for the right reason? But begin to move in the body of Christ for the wrong reasons? The reason that you came to God I'm talking about the personal reason. Yes, we didn't want to go to hell and so forth. But but what's the, what's the way to escape hell? Knowing Jesus. I encourage you to stay focused on Jesus. If you stay focused on Jesus, your walk with God will always have fire in it. It'll always have a burning. It'll always have a glow to it. You've got to stay focused on Jesus, not the sermon. Not the sermon that you preach or the sermon that you hear. The purpose of the sermon that I hear is to reveal Jesus to me. The purpose of the sermon that I preach is to help somebody else along with myself know Jesus better. And having known Jesus to reflect Jesus, but it's still Jesus. If you stay focused on Jesus, you will not be offended so easily when someone does or says something crazy. If you stay focused on Jesus, you will not vie and compete for positions. If you stay focused on Jesus, you'll be able to submit to one another when someone gives instruction. Walk here, stand here, sit here, not yet. Um, help us with this. Please serve with that. That won't bother you at all when you stay focused on Jesus. Hallelujah. But in the context of this prayer and this, this worship uh, seminar or, or, or festival, ladies and gentlemen, when you, when your worship diminishes, when your worship is negatively affected, when I'm not praying as I ought, when I'm not worshiping as I ought, when I'm not lifting my hands as I ought, when I'm not bowing down as I ought, it's because I've gotten my eyes off Jesus. It is possible to do worship. It's possible to do what they call lead worship and not even be focused on Jesus. It is possible to be shouting and running and yet not focused on Jesus. And it's definitely possible to be in the midst of others who are shouting and running and you sitting there like you in a coma because you're not focused on Jesus. If you stay focused on Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, your prayer will retain its passion. And if you ever lose your passion, you know how to get it back. It's Jesus. Let me tell you something. My God. When, when we're in prayer and we're saying Jesus, 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 we're not saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus because we don't have any other words. We're not saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus because we're not articulate. 
We're not saying Jesus, 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 because we don't have a vocabulary. But we're saying Jesus, 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 because when I think about what I'm talking about, when I think about what I'm concerned about, when I think about what I might be worried about, when I think about what I care about, the greatest, the most emphatic way for me to express what's really on my heart, except for speaking with other tongues, is to call the name of the one who is my focus, the one who can fix, the one who can heal, the one who can restore, the one who can discipline, the one who can challenge, the one who can stabilize. Are you listening to me? Don't think we're ignorant because we say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I found out that that name can help you to bring your focus back in. Somebody that's been hurt, somebody that's been broken, there's something about focusing on Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. You remember the story of Peter, the great apostle, how the Bible says that uh, by faith he began to walk on the water at the command of Jesus. But the Bible says that when he saw the wind boisterous, he became afraid and began to sink. It's hard to see without looking. The implication is that he got his eyes off Jesus. He got his focus off Jesus and got his focus on the surroundings. Are you listening? And he began to sing. Ladies and gentlemen, he kept his eyes on Jesus. He kept walking. I tried to share a little lesson many years ago now entitled, Keep Your Eyes on Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. I believe that it was Peter's faith in who Jesus was. Because remember what he said, if it be you. He didn't say if you have power. He didn't say um, if you're a miracle worker. He said if it is you. Your identity gives me the power to walk on this water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your identity gives me the right to do the supernatural. You, just you being who you are. He said, if you are, if it is you, bid me to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, the title of the lesson was Keep Your Eyes on Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Fast forward to the stoning of Stephen. Fast forward to the book of Acts chapter seven, where the Bible says that the first Christian martyr, we think of him as having been, he was one of the seven that were chosen. Uh, to help serve. And uh, we, we, we believe that he was a deacon, one of the first, one of the original deacons. And the Bible says that um, uh, the, the people, the, the council rose up and dragged him out, stripped his clothes and, and began to stone him. They began to stone him. And the Bible says, Stephen said, I see Jesus. Look, I, I see Jesus. He's standing on the right hand of the Father. Now notice this. Jesus didn't get him out of the stoning. Jesus did not get him out of the situation. Jesus did not get him uh, out of the death. But you know what? Stephen was able to forgive the people who were stoning him because he kept his eyes on Jesus. He said, I see Jesus. I, I see him. I see him. I see him. When Paul was on the ship, fast forward with me to uh, chapter 27 of Acts. The angel of the Lord appeared to him. He said, don't be afraid. You're in the storm. But you're going to Rome, and not only are you going, everybody sailing with you is going. What was the angel telling him to do? Keep your eyes on Jesus. He said, you got, you got to be a witness for Jesus. And so I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, that if you're going to be an effective worshiper, if you're going to be an effective leader, if you're going to be a child of God that walks in the joy and pleasure that he said is his and said is yours. Keep your focus on Jesus. A lot of this talk about 
church hurt and so forth, it's real. The church hurt is a real phenomenon. But you know, it's not because it's just church hurt, it's real hurt, it's just life hurt, life hurts. But the way you get through life hurts is to keep your focus on Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm telling you church, I'm telling you that we need to check ourselves and ask ourselves, when I get in this house of worship, am I really focused on Jesus? or my favorite preacher, or my favorite singer, or sitting with my boo, or sitting with my good friends, or, 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 or waving at cuz. Or am, 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 am I excited about singing that song? Man, that, that groove, that drive, I'm looking forward to that, man. Oh, well, when they start playing that thing, I can feel that thing. Woo That's good. But is that focused on Jesus, though? As a musician, am I focused on Jesus? Or am I focused on how this band is slamming? Am I focused on Jesus? Or am I focused on how many likes we're going to get on our social media platforms? All, all of those things are good, but understand, none of those things, none of those things ought to be your focus. Jesus is my focus. I'm here in this office. I'm here on this live stream. I'm here with you. I've got, there are people on the phone, all that kind of thing. But ladies and gentlemen, I did not come here because I'm focused on, thank God for you. But but I don't want to do this to focus on, if I do that, I'm a man pleaser. If I do that, I'm an entertainer. We're going to be praying just a few minutes, for a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, the focus has to be Jesus. The focus, the intent has to be Jesus. You know Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Note he puts weight before sin. You know what the implication is? For the child of God, you're not wallowing around in sin. That, that's not your first problem. It's the weights. It's the distractions. It, it's the things that are pulling at you. It's the things that are tugging you off course. He said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. What's the next verse say? Looking unto Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Jesus can help you with the weights. Jesus can help us with the sin. How many of us are witnesses? He can help you to get rid of the weights. And he can help you to get rid of your sin, but you got to focus on him. Don't focus on the weights. Don't even focus on the sin. Focus on the Jesus who died to deliver us from our sin. And so when you begin to pray and it seems like you can't get, can't get through, you focus on Jesus. Wait a minute. When there's something that's trying to keep you from praying, hear me? When there's, when, when there's, almost like a lax attitude or lassitude that has come, apathy, lethargy. Mm -hmm. Go back to your focus on Jesus. You, you know Jesus. You know your history with Jesus. You know your testimony. You know how you and he have communed together. You know how you and he have walked together. You know what he has meant to you. You know what you mean to him. My brother, my dear sister, I'm telling you, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. The enemy will do everything in his power to get your gaze somewhere else. Did you hear me? I said the enemy will do everything he can to get you to get your gaze somewhere else. So I said, well, Brother Blue, suppose somebody is sick. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. We believe God for healing. And until the healing manifests, keep your eyes on Jesus. Somebody said, well, suppose somebody died. If you're dying, keep your eyes on Jesus. If you're dying, you, this, you need to make sure you got your eyes on Jesus. If you die with your eyes on Jesus, my brother, sister, when you close your eyes here, 
You open your eyes on Jesus there. Lord, I wish I had time and opportunity to drive this into clarity. Brothers and sisters, preacher when you don't feel like preaching. Leader when you don't feel like leading. Husband when it seems like your house is rebelling against what you're trying to build. Wife when it seems as if your giving is never enough. Oh God. Whatever your plight might be, single person, when it looks as if certain things that you desire are going to pass you by, let me tell you something. You keep your eyes on Jesus. You keep him at the center. You keep him at the core. You let him give you guidance and direction. If you can't find direction by yourself and none of us can totally by ourselves, then ask him to guide you. Ask him to set you up to hear him in some other voice. Hear him through this written word, first of all. Hear him through whatever means. But come on, brother, keep your eyes. Keep your eyes. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hmm. He will not fail you. If you ever start failing, we need to all know it so that we can all despair <sighs> intentionally. Ladies and gentlemen, he won't fail you. He won't fail. In your most miserable moment, he'll still show you that there's a reason for you to rejoice. In your most miserable moment, he will sustain you. But you got to keep your eyes on him. The enemy's desire is to get your eyes off him. The reason why Adam and Eve fell in the garden, they got distracted. They got into an identity crisis. And the only way that you can get into an identity crisis is that you get your eyes off him because you were created in his image. You were created after his likeness. And so as long as you're focused on who he is, to understand who he is is to understand who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not making up anything new. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says that Eve started gazing at that fruit. You, you go back and read it. So when she saw the fruit that it was pleasant to the eyes and good for food and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she got to focus off him and got to focus on it. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes on Jesus. I've given you the passages. I hope you read them. Father, Father, I thank you for the privilege of sharing with your people a key to being reset because all of us as humans can tend to get off course in our thinking, off course in our priorities, off course in our motives, off course with our attitudes, our emotions. But Father, I thank you that if a man or woman is genuinely saved and even those who are not saved but, but have the fear of God, if they'll bring themselves back to the centrality, to the core of who Jesus is, I'm not doing what I'm doing to get pats on the back, though I love for my back to be patted. Yes, love for people to say good things. Yes, love to be compensated for good work. Yes, that's not why we do what we do, because there's so many times where we will not have our backs padded, we will not be compensated, and there'll be times where the very ones that we try to give our lives to serve will be the ones who rise up against us and cause us pain and discomfort. But oh God, help us that every time we sing, we got our eyes on Jesus. What kind of choir would we be? What kind of praise and worship would we be? What kind of musicians would we be? What kind of preachers and teachers would we be? What kind of parents? What kind of spouses would we be? God Almighty. What 
quality of decisions would we make? What kinds of policies would we enact? Oh God, what kinds of practices would we undertake if we would keep our focus, if we would keep our eyes on Jesus? Lord, I ask you to forgive me for every time that I've allowed my eyes to stray. Peter did the supernatural because he had his eyes on you. He did what no man had ever done before because he had his eyes. Hallelujah on you. You said his faith was little, but a little faith with his eyes on Jesus was enough for him to walk on H2O. God Almighty, man, Oh, God. I ask you to help us now. The word that we have shared, the word concerning the altar, the word concerning humility. Oh, God. None of it makes sense if we don't focus on Jesus, but all of it makes sense when we regain our focus on you. When we focus on you, we are willing to humble ourselves. When we focus on you, it helps us to better understand who's on our altar because you, you saw us on your altar. When we came to call on your name, you said, he that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. Now, Father, I just want to say thank you. I know all my old soul. I know ba 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 sa ta ta ma kolo soul. Shalma se na i na mo honda. I ma o ma o sa ta ma ma se ke a. She la mundo ko ma ha ma ha ya. She na ma da la ma ma ka ya. He ka ta ta ma ma is. Oh God, Lord Jesus, I'm so grateful that you've given us. This day, our daily bread in your word. I know we've got to move on. I know we've got to move into the sessions. I know we've got to have the time of fellowship. But, oh, God, I'm asking you, let the say, I know the enemy will try to make them scared. He'll say, if you focus on Jesus, you're going to miss some things. If you focus on people, on Jesus, people are going to think you odd. They're not going to want you to be around them. And, Oh, God, let them know that nothing could be further from the truth. Let them know that if they focus on Jesus, hallelujah, that the aroma of Jesus will cause them to be more attractive than they've ever been. The aroma of Jesus will cause them to be more magnetic and more charismatic than they've ever been. That the aroma of Jesus, if they're carrying the fragrance of Jesus, not the fragrance of religiosity, not the fragrance or the stench of eccentricity and idiosyncrasy. But oh God, if we truly focus on being who Jesus said be, doing what Jesus said, do, and knowing him, knowing him, knowing him, knowing him, knowing that he's real, knowing that he's real, Lord, help us to remember that you're real. Help us to remember that you're real, that you're not just a figure in the Bible. You're not just a historical character, but that you're right now real, that you're right now relevant, that you're right now present. And oh God, help us to manifest you until the unbeliever believes. Help us to manifest you until the sinner can receive the fact that you are real, that you are present, that you rose from the dead 2,000 years ago, but the angels didn't say he rose. The angels say he is risen. He is risen. And just as the apostles and the disciples of old testified, we are supposed to bear witness that he is risen, that he is, that he's right now, right now, right now among us. Let us manifest Jesus. Let us manifest Jesus. Let us lay hands on the sick and manifest Jesus. Let us prophesy and speak words of revelation and manifest Jesus. Oh God, let works of power be done through our lives to manifest Jesus. Oh God, most of all, let us live lives of love and joy and peace and goodness and gentleness. Hallelujah. And long suffering and meekness. Hallelujah. And, and, and temperance. 
God, let us live lives that testify that Jesus is alive. Let us live lives that are so overwhelmingly loving and so overwhelmingly joyous and so overwhelmingly peaceful that somebody will look at us and say, you've got to be in touch with God. You've got to know God. There's something about your love, your peace, your joy, something about the virtue that you carry. It's unearthly. It's not natural. It's from another dimension. It's from another time. It's from another, another world. Oh, God. Lord, help us to keep our focus on you. Help us to keep our eyes on you. When we gauge how well we've done a thing, when we gauge and when we assess, when we evaluate our performance, hallelujah, let us remember that we are performing before an audience of one, that we are attempting God to gain the approval of the audience of one. Hallelujah. We have your approval as our father. Hallelujah. But we want you to be able to approve of our works as well, our attitudes and all of those things. We give you glory. You approve of who we are. We want you to be able to approve of what we do and how we do it. And I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, I bless your name. I appreciate you, Lord. Lord, there's so many needs. Lord, all over the world, all over the world, all over the world, all over the world, all over the nation, all over the states. Each state, Lord, each county, each borough, each ward. Oh, God, uh, each county, each city, each town, uh, each neighborhood, uh, each district. Uh, but stretch out your mighty hand. Each street, each home. Uh, God, but stretch out your mighty hand uh, and show yourself mighty and strong. Uh, Lord, those are most so tamakaya taneo sol matai lebebeokai. Those, Lord, that are bereaved. Uh, Lord, we ask you to comfort them this morning. You are the comfort. You are the comforter. You are the comforter. You know how. We trust you when we don't know what to say. We trust you, Lord, when we know when we don't know, Lord, how, how to bring consolation. We trust you. Then, Lord. Oh, Oh, la baba sha. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my sabayata. Those that are undergoing physical stress, physical distress, physical attacks. God Almighty, I'm not there with them in that hospital room or in that rehab room or, Lord, in their homes or wherever they might be. But, Lord, by your precious Holy Spirit, even those in the replay, hallelujah. I'm asking you, Lord, to let them sense your power. I stretch forth my hands toward them in accord to your word that said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Oh, God, but your hands are present with them. Your hands are present with them, Lord. And I'm asking you to let them sense your glory. Let them sense that Jesus uh, is in the room. In the name of Jesus, uh, I command that man, that woman to rise up and be made whole. Uh, rise up and walk. Rise up and be restored. Uh, I command the swelling to go out of you. I command the inflammation to go out of you. I command the infection to go out of you. I command it to go out of you in the name of Jesus. I command that blood pressure to be regulated. I command that heart rhythm to be regulated. In the name of Jesus, I command excessive fluid to go out of the bodies. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, work miracles today, Father. Work a healing work in the name of the Lord. Work a healing work in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring somebody's mind back together. Bring somebody's mind to a place of peace and stability. And we give you glory for it right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let every other need be met. Yours is the kingdom this morning. Yours is the power this morning. Yours is the glory. Uh, do something new. Uh, the word of the Lord week before last in this sanctuary was something new. Do something new in that life. Uh, do something new uh, in that situation, oh God. And for all of this, we will be careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, go before us into the sessions. Go before us into every session. 
Go before us into every session. Go before us into the plenary session, Lord. Give the presenters exactly what your people need. Give them exactly what your people need. And for this, we will give you all the glory. We will give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to praise the Lord wherever you are right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Everybody praise him. Will you take a moment? Take a moment and give the Lord praise. Give the Lord thanks. Give the Lord thanks. Oh, yes, Lord. We appreciate you. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to give elaborate notices and announcements today. We'll give thorough announcements throughout the day and, and what we miss today uh, tomorrow in the morning worship service. I've given lots of notices early on, and so we're going to go uh, forward and just give God uh, the praise for the remainder of the day. Join us. It's not too late. It's not too late. Join us, Marion High School. Join us, the Door of Hope Church. I believe that something good is about to happen to you and now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Uh, I do need to make one other notice. I stated, based on our correspondence, that uh, um, Sister Rossi, you're in that prayer. You tell Ashton that God's going to heal him. Um, now, I told you um, on third, told the group on Thursday that uh, Brother Kalante Gavin would be with us. That was his stated intention. I didn't dream that. I've got the messaging right here. But he said a family emergency arose. You know, he's a family man now. He's married now. And a family, I don't know if it's regarding, you know, on the marital side with, you know, in-laws or what, but but a, a family emergency arose. And he, he and his wife are unable to be here, though they were both planning to be here. Consequently, we will have to have his presentation at another time. All right, but the rest of everything else still takes place as it has been announced. We are what the word of God says that we are. We have what the word of God says that we have and we can do what the word of God says that we can do for we are committed to bring pleasure to Christ's heart and to uh, bring fame to his name until we meet again at the appointed hour, my brother, my sister. May the peace of the one and only God go with you.
Lost the web. <laughs> <laughs>